What's up? I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the Apple Byte. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple, so let's get to the show. Now, I've been swamped with emails over the past few weeks from people asking if they should buy a MacBook Pro or not. The quick answer is a wait, but here's what you guys should know. Apple's MacBook Pro lineup is due for a refresh this quarter. It normally gets an update every 200 days or so. The last refresh was in June, and that's over 250 days since the last update. A Geekbench report for a MacBook Pro using the recently announced Intel Core i7 chips was also leaked and published online, which also points to new models potentially coming soon. Recent reports from multiple sites show a dummy product placeholder in Best Buy's inventory, which could be preparations for the iPad or MacBook Pros. My last Best Buy source didn't really pan out, so this isn't really the strongest indicator. But with no new software or hardware announcements at the beginning of 2010, the time is right for new MacBook Pros, so be patient if you can and just wait for it. Now, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain just wrapped up, and even though Apple had no presence there, they were still a big part of it. Apple CEO Steve Jobs won the title for Mobile Personality of the Year. It was created for the 15th anniversary of the show, and SJ made sure he wasn't there to pick up his award. Now, in other news from the show, the Windows Phone 7 series is coming this year. Thanks for the ridiculous name, Microsoft, but I'm genuinely excited for its slick Zoom-like interface and features. Come on, these demo videos already have me drooling. Now, if you want more demos, Wired recently showcased their tablet app, and this, plain and simple, got me giddy. It's an Adobe Air app using the same InDesign files that are used to create their killer magazine. This was not CG'd, it's the real thing. At the Mobile World Congress, Adobe announced its Packager for iPhone tool that will allow Flash apps, including Adobe Air apps, to run on Apple's mobile devices. Would you like to read Wired like this on your iPad or future Android devices? Yes, please. All right, we haven't had one of these for a while, but we're bringing in my good buddy Donald Bell with a tip for syncing your iTunes library. Hey there, I'm Donald Bell for CNET.com, and today I'm going to show you how to sync your iTunes libraries between multiple computers in your home using a new feature in iTunes 9 called Home Sharing. It's a great solution for those times when you buy an album or a TV show on your computer, and your wife or kid wants a copy on their computer too. It also comes in handy if you have a laptop and a home computer whose music collections have branched apart and you like to get them back in sync. The first step is to make sure all the computers in your home are running iTunes 9 or later, and are connected to the web through your home router. Next, find the first computer you want to share from and select the home sharing icon in the left window of iTunes. If you don't see an icon, go into the advanced menu of iTunes and select turn home sharing on. In the main window, you should see a place to plug in your iTunes store login and password. After hitting create home share, repeat these same steps on the other computers in your home. iTunes only allows a maximum of five computers to be authorized, so if you're managing more than that, choose carefully. After you're done, you should see each of the other libraries appear in the left window of iTunes. From here, you can browse and play any of the files, and best of all, you can transfer content out of one library and into another. To quickly see just the content you don't already have, use the menu in the lower left corner to filter out the duplicates. You can also use the Settings button in the lower right corner to automatically transfer any new iTunes store purchases between libraries. Automatic syncing works only with iTunes purchase content and applies to purchases made after the setting was switched on. So old purchases will still need to be transferred manually. So that's home sharing in iTunes 9, a feature that makes it much easier to distribute your iTunes music and videos across all the computers in your home. For CNET.com, I'm Donald Bell. Thanks, DB, but after using this and finding your entire collection of Celine Dion and Enya songs, I quickly disabled the feature. All right, let's check out some quick bites. Apple's stepping up their game with an extended warranty repair program for customers experiencing hard drive issues who bought a white or black MacBook between May 2006 and December 2007. After I ripped them a new one last week, it's nice to see Apple's taking care of us, especially when I have one of those laptops. 
and we don't get too many looks into the life of Steve Jobs, but the New York Times says El Jobzo will be working in cooperation with the former managing editor of Time Magazine, Walter Isaacson, on an authorized biography covering his entire life. Now, there are plenty of unauthorized bios on Steve Jobs like Icon. It was actually that book that caused Steve Jobs to pull all titles from its publisher off Apple Store shelves. Yep, it's good to be the king. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your emails to theapplebyte at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. And come back next time for another bite of the apple. Watch all of your favorite live streaming CNET shows at CNET Live. You'll find a schedule of what's showing next, and you can chat live with the hosts and other listeners during the show. CNET Live at CNET.com slash live.